Hello everyone and welcome to this latest video where we're going to be taking a look at the bulletin that the developers of Stormworks have released on June 30th, so a couple days ago here, where they were talking about the compressed gases and fluid pressure update that will come to Stormworks. Now some of this information they released is maybe logical or self-explanatory, and some of it took a little bit of understanding, especially from the point of view of fluid dynamics, which is a course that I took in university with pressures and all that stuff. So I'm going to be doing my best to show diagrams of what the what the developers mean in this update bulletin and hopefully you guys can all understand. So what I'm going to do is go through each item and show a diagram on my end here. But pretty much what the developers are saying is that players have been asking for compressed gases for years and this condition would mean a change to the game the way the way the game works and they want to minimize the effect on existing vehicles they don't want to break everyone's creation or at least try not to um, we'll see how that is possible or not but regardless uh, there's a positive support for the adding of compressed gases now currently the existing mechanics don't allow air to be contained in custom tanks or to be compressed to a smaller container. So what happens is air is default in there, but you can pump in whatever you want and the air will pretty much just disappear. So they're saying this isn't realistic, but it's to make the game simpler. Now for the update, where a container is already full of air, there is no space for fuel unless you add a way to compress the air. So the best way I can show that here is in, if this is a container that we have in front of us here and it's full of air, which I'm gonna show with green, so imagine this and now you're trying to add say diesel to it and pump it in but the air is fully contained in that container so the air is taking up the entire space like in real life imagine and now what is going to happen you're trying to pump in diesel but there's no space for the diesel to enter without either compressing this so say this gets compressed to one tenth and then this can fill up with our diesel or compressed what or what so now you have a pressurized system so you have diesel in here but you also have compressed air so it says the risk is oh, eh, so sorry they're saying there's no space for fuel unless you add allow, allow air to compress and allow backflow or add some kind of relief valve so alternatively imagine if you have a valve up here we'll show it like this so if you have a valve, now that air can actually leave, and as it removes itself, you can fill this up all the way. So that's kind of how I read that. Now, they're, they're saying without doing that, the risk is that like in a real plumbed system, you can get air locked, where trapped air can block flow. So it, without this valve, like I just said, you'd have a system where you'd not be able to complete filling the tank up entirely because there'd always be some compressed air or there'd be no compressed air it would just be fully air without a compressible factor and you can't even add anything into there if we scroll down they're saying here so a new approach simply adding compressed tanks isn't great because it doesn't make sense that air behaves differently in different containers so it makes sense they'd add it if they're saying if they added a container that was a compressible container or whatever what about the other places it, it doesn't really make sense and it, it, I think, causes more confusion than anything. So, it's better to rework the entire pressure system and flow system to generally allow compression flow and pressure to allow... Anyway, they'd add a system that allows compression of gases. Now, in real life, obviously gases can be compressed, like gases, you know, air, carbon dioxide, whatever. You can compress it, nitrogen, things like that. But for uh, liquids, they generally you can't compress liquids is what the they say I mean whether it allows a tiny bit of compression or not that's not what we're after here but for assumption let's just say it doesn't allow compression so liquid is always going to be the same volume no matter what even under a pressurized system so here now they're saying compression and pressure we're developing a new system where pressure is in real world units atmospheres pressure directly relates to compression where gas occupies a tenth of the volume at 10 atmospheres compared to one atmosphere. By adding compression, directly deriving pressures from this compression, you get a simple system that better reflects the real world. So that's what they said. So the way I could explain this 
is in the case of this container here, where we have a thousand liters, let's call it, of air at one atmosphere. So that's what the volume of this tank is a thousand liters. Whether you put air or diesel or water, it's a thousand liters. That's the volume of the container. You could put a thousand liters of air in that container currently, right? But now that's not compressed air, that's just the volume of that container. If you were to compress this into one tenth the size, which what I'm showing on the right hand side here, it still occupies, rather it still contains a thousand liters of air, just in a smaller volume, right? So now instead of the volume being the size of this container on the left, the big container, you now have a container, you could have a container that's much smaller and it's still containing the same 1000 liters. So I'll try to explain that again a little bit more clear. On the left hand side you have a volume or a container with the volume of 1000 liters. If you put in water or diesel or air it's 1000 liters. But water and diesel you can't compress whereas air you can compress. So now that same 1000 liters of air can actually become this sized 1000 liters of air meaning you need a container, you could use a container one-tenth the size to fill the same amount of air that you'd fill in a thousand liter tank. Now that's the top one, so that's the gas volume, and that's here the compression. So the left side is one atmosphere, but now the difference is you now have this pressurized, and it's actually at a pressure, and an atmosphere, it's 10 atmospheres. So it's pressurized system, allowing you to have the same amount of air in both left and right hand side, the only difference is pressure. Now, on the bottom here, we're talking about container volume. So, imagine a container is the same size. So our container, let's call it, is a thousand liter container. So like I said, whether diesel or whether air, it's a thousand liter volume container. But now, if you pressurize your air, you can actually pump in 10,000 liters of air, and then they'll be at 10 atmospheres, rather than 1,000 liters of air at one atmosphere. So they're saying that's what you get here with the compression and pressure. And then their last statement here, it says fluid flows from high pressure to low pressure. The rate of fluid is driven by the difference in pressure and once pressure equalizes, the flow stops. So that's what I'm trying to show here. On the left hand side of this top one right here, it's at four atmospheres. And then this one in the light green is at one atmosphere. So this four atmosphere is obviously pressurized. Now their total is five atmospheres of pressure. So I don't know how, if the game is gonna work this way, but in theory, we have a total of five atmospheres of pressure, four in their left hand side, one in the right hand side. And obviously with that, it'll flow. The, the flow is driven by the difference in, in pressure. So it'll flow from here out. So like if you ever had a, you know, inflatable boat or a balloon, you, you've pressurized the air inside that balloon or boat. And now if you all of a sudden cut it or get a puncture or release it, the air, it will flow out into the atmosphere, which is not a pressurized system. So, but if you were to have it inside, like if you had a balloon in, filled up and then you had a balloon that was empty and you attached the two nozzles to, the, to each other and you released it, they'd equalize in pressure. So that's what we're showing here. So the four atmosphere and one atmosphere will equalize at 2.5 atmospheres. And now that's, a stable and equal system. Obviously, both tanks are still high pressure, but at least it's equal in flow, or sorry, equal in pressure now. The next title is compartments. So now they're saying custom tanks and sealed areas can now contain air, and this air can be compressed in flow. This makes resolving flow through doors much more complex, but more interesting to develop. This the existing mechanics allow only fluid to overflow from one compartment in, into another, through a door into the next. So with compressed gases, so we're gonna stop there. So we're talking right now about this first statement here. So this makes the current system, the existing mechanics allow for fluid to overflow, fluid to overflow from one compartment through a door into the next. So in this case here, let's pretend this is closed. And now it's a stable system. This arrow is not applicable. It's, you know, you have the fluid in the left hand side, or you could even be like this. And then this one is empty. Now, obviously, if you remove the door or open the door, your fluid's going to want to go this way, right? And what will happen is you'll end up with this 
now turning and lowering itself until both are equal like that obviously the same volume so if this is 10,000 liters or whatever 10 liters doesn't matter then likewise it'll it'll be five if this is at the bottom and it allows it to be fully equal but in a case where it's not so in the case where we had previously which imagine you have this so now really only this amount is overflowing here so we show it like this then in our after after the fluid or liquid moved over it'll look something like this and it's the exact same amount of volume just moved over okay that's the current system with the liquids so gas or water or whatever that's what happens but now the next statement they're saying with compressed gases you now have gas blow in or rush out so like i said the balloon situation where you pop a balloon while fluid still needs to level out so this can be quite complex consider a situation where on one side of the door there's a high water pressure high water level but low pressure while on the other side there's lots of compressed gas with only a little water what happens so take a look at the bottom here so we're saying now we have a good amount of water on the left hand side with one atmosphere so it's not pressurized whereas on the right hand side we have a pressurized air tank let's say so what was what is going to happen you'd have your water flow in the same way likewise but in theory this pressurized tank won't want to allow that right so what, what may have to happen is first the system will need to pressurize or equal in pressure as far as the air pressure goes so in this case you'd have your 2.5 and then your fluid or liquid would even out but the dis the difference is would it even allow it to come in because in theory in this case you'd have this pressurized tank and it, it has a higher pressure so it's trying to limit what comes into it right like if you ever took a cup a, a glass or plastic cup and put it upside down and try to lower it into a bathtub that's full of water or a sink full of water your air is going to prevent the water from even coming in so it's, you're going to end up with a void of air trapped like an air bubble or air pocket trapped even though it's open to the bottom of and the water is sitting right up against the air so what happens moment by moment is what they're saying when you open this door obviously they have to do some kind of experiments to see what happens in real life the end end result would obviously be an equilibrium but would would your water transfer over as soon as you open the door or would first the air pressure equal out and then the water wants to transfer or would it first start off with a trickle because now you have a high pressure that water is trying to enter a high pressure system and then as they level out pressure wise then the water flow increases so that's something the developers will have to look at and determine how they want to go about it delta height so they're talking about this with current piping systems the delta height equals pressure delta is the difference so if we open up my document that's this so you have delta height in the case of this left system here it's the difference and no matter what the piping is all it is is the difference of this piping system and that's how the pressure currently works so they're saying that that's what currently equals to pressure now this this they plan on removing because imagine now you have a high pressure system down here on the lower tank so let's say this is high pressure and you still have this delta fight so they're going to just scrap it and remove it and make it so you you only work with the pressure of the tanks and when you open it up they try to like th there's a valve here imagine and as you open it up they try to equalize it won't really come into play the different heights of the systems now i'm assuming or hoping that's only for gas and not for liquid based system because of course in a liquid based system like this you should end up dropping all the liquid into that lower tank so the delta height or pressure in that case the water should still want to flow via gravity so i'm not sure and also because liquid can't be compressed that should still be working I, I wasn't quite sure when i read this it just says within a pipe system the pressure equals the delta height but as long as the liquid still flows i mean as far the gas can 
can behave in an opposite way or in a different way, in my opinion. So what I said here is the pressure dictated by compressed gas is in the container. So it's not in the height or the delta height of this system. And the last item is airlock. So they're saying if air can no longer be created or destroyed, this means that air can be trapped and build up pressure or lack of air can mean a vacuum resists a tank from emptying fluid. This is the downside of this rework as while it may be realistic, you may sometimes need to understand a bit about pressure and plumbing. And then they said we're adding a new gas and liquid relief valve to allow air pressure to escape or be drawn back into va va vacuums to solve this issue. So the diagram I have here on the top one, we have a high pressure, high air pressure tank right here. And we have water, let's say that's filled up in this tank. And we're trying to pump in this water into this high pressure tank. So like I was saying earlier, you could put the water here, but you are going to start to develop this. And this is now going to be highly compressed. And it'll be high pressure. Just forget that this is written here. So it'll look like this. And now you'll have this this amount of thing and this is obviously going to be empty whatever it drains this is while it works it's technically an unstable system and also assuming there's a limit to how much you can pressurize it maybe 10 atmospheres is max pressurization maybe you can't go to 11 so in that case you'd have one tenth of your container still contain your compressed air so what they're uh, they're saying or proposing to do is that they would add a valve I'm just going to show it with this symbol clip this symbol is a work point but whatever so they're going to add a valve that you now put and presumably your air can now just leave and this will fill up the rest of the way so that's the the gas relief pressure now does the system need to actually like do we one of the questions i have is will this pressure valve actually have to have a pressure like an exhaust port on this side like will it need like a fluid exhaust port or does it just need to be inserted into your container like a you know fluid spawner or whatever and it just deletes the air for better for lack of better term rather than actually this where it would in theory release it into your atmosphere so do we have to have every or does every tank now have to have a full access point for that air to leave it would obviously be more, more realistic if you did or will it just be in in a terms of a fluid spawner or physics flutter that sits inside your container and poof your air is in it and gone so that's what we have here um the liquid relief valve is something that i want to talk about in a case of this bottom one where you have a vacuum so you're vacuuming up your the air and you have water or whatever diesel and you're trying to pump it into a different container think of it like a uh, like a syringe like a water syringe or medicine syringe that you suck up and now it, the pressure is keeping the water from leaving obviously the water is, can drip right out but because it's vacuumed up there it stays put in that system so would you put your liquid relief valve i mean obviously you could put your gas relief and then in this case it would pre it'd repressurize and you'd no longer have a vacuum it would be a pressurized equivalent let's say one atmosphere tank here so this would just become one atmosphere and then this would flow because it wouldn't care or would you put your uh liquid relief valve which would now allow your liquid to flow even in the case of a vacuum so i'm not quite sure how that's going to work but that's kind of my take on this However, all this brings up questions. So, can you achieve a vacuum void of all gas? So that's one of the questions. Could you achieve a perfect vacuum that's just empty or could you only relieve or rather than pressurizing, you create a vacuum that's pressure, that's lacking pressure, let's call it. And then in that case, will a high pressure gas be explosive? So obviously in this left-hand picture, you have a pressurized gas exploding they, they'd be explosive of course and then will it cause a massive explosion will it just cause damage how do will they implement that the next point is can a vacuum chamber implode so that's this gas uh, tank here on the train car it obviously imploded it sucked itself in because there was 
it was lacking in rigidity or whatever the case may be. So will they have, if you exceed a certain amount of vacuum, will it implode? Will it explode? What type will it do nothing? Maybe. So how that is going to all be implemented is some, kind of my questions. Then will there be a fluid pressure spawner that allows you to preset a pressure in a sealed compartment? So currently we could add, you know, gas, we could add diesel or jet fuel or water inside a container and it'll start spawned off there. Will they add a pressure spawner? So I could say this container is going to start off with 10 atmosphere or minus five atmosphere or whatever. Will they add that? That'd be, it would make sense that they do. I just don't know how it would work with all things in the game. Will entering, will, will entering a high pressure container cause damage to the player? So imagine you enter a really high pressure room. I think if you go far enough, you can end up seriously injured. So will that cause damage or will entering a container void of air in a sense that it's a vacuum cause damage to the player? Now there's obviously more questions that have had. These were just some quick ones I threw together that kind of I thought about as I was putting this presentation together, but obviously comment down below if you do have some make sure you join my discord as always we we talked about this a little bit on there and let me know what you think in the comments and in my discord channel and as always happy stormworksing